to Magnathia Bureau Works. This is going to be a battle report. Yes, I know, uh, most of the time don't do battle reports on this channel. I'm all about building scenery rather than the actual playing games upon it. But I do like to play games and uh, we have done one battle report already, which if you have seen it, you'll know it was a Burrows and Badgers battle report that we did earlier in the summer. Uh, it was a bit of an experiment. I wanted to try and, and produce a battle report that was different to most of the, the videos that I've seen on YouTube. Um, and it was very positively received. So if you watched that, thanks very much. Uh, if you liked it, thanks even more. And if you left comments and we got loads of really helpful, positive comments, then again, thank you very much. And it was quite clear from those comments that people wanted to see more. So this is another video uh, another battle report uh, for Burrows and Badgers. What do you mean you haven't seen the first one? Well, don't just sit here. Don't bother watching this one. Actually, it will. This one will make a lot more sense if you watch the first one first. So uh, um, press pause on this one and go and find the Burrows and Badgers battle report from uh, the summer. Watch that one first, then come back here. Oh, and in the meantime, if you haven't already, because you're new to this channel, click subscribe. Excellent. Um, <sighs> If you uh, uh, have seen the first one, or if you don't care which order you see them in, then this is a battle report for Burrows and Badgers by Oathsworn Games. Um, uh, Burrows and Badgers, for those who don't know, is a skirmish game of anthropomorphic animals. Probably my favourite game, uh, certainly at the moment. Maybe even, maybe possibly, maybe, well... Definitely in the last 10 years. Maybe, possibly, maybe even possibly uh, my favourite game of the 35 plus years that I've been tabletop gaming. Maybe, possibly. Although original Necromunda does hold a special place in my heart. For always. As do other games too. But b, &B at the moment is certainly the game that I like to play. Uh, I like to play it because it's a, a fast, a exciting Skirmish game, easy to learn, difficult to master, exactly my kind of game. Fantastic figure range by Michael Lovejoy of Oswald Miniatures. Um, although you don't have to just use Oswald figures, it's a miniatures agnostic game. You can play with figures from other companies as well, which is pretty cool. I like that. Um, I love the fact that actually when you play the game, you can buy the miniatures that you like just because you like them, rather than because they go with a particular faction that you need. Any figure can go with any figure which is really neat. It's a, a very good way of selling your toy soldiers. Well done, Michael. Good thinking. Um, so, I know that if you're here to watch a build, then this isn't quite the video for you, but I do hope you sit around and watch this, because there are builds going on. Over here is a Necromunda build that I'm doing at the moment, and that, that video will fall into that series sooner or later. This, though, is the second battle report in a campaign uh, game of games, although this is actually the third game in the campaign. Yeah, that makes sense. If you have watched the first battle report, or if you don't care, here it comes. Spoiler alert, this is what happened. Um, a a ne'er-do-well named Joe Stalin uh, had stolen something and gathered information about various underworld gangs in the great mercantile city of London. The underworld gangs and their leaders are quite cross with this uh, young bird and they want him, well, pretty much, well, you'd say tarred and feathered, but he's already got feathers, so um, plucked and stuffed. How about that? Um, Joe Stalin sought sanctuary in Redwall Abbey. Grey slate, grey roof abbey. Oh, that abbey, you know that abbey I made, it was really, you don't know about the abbey I made. Go and watch those videos because they're really cool too. Links down below. Um, anyway, the uh, the ne'er do well uh, sought sanctuary in the abbey. Sir Hartley Longshanks of the Order of the Crown was dispatched with his retinue to secure the ne'er do well, and uh, a whole bunch of black and brown rats were sent to the abbey to try and yeah pluck and stuff the ne'er do well. Uh, it didn't go very well at all for the rats. Uh, there was a, a lot of violence. Uh, many of them were hurt. Several of them fell off roofs um, in quite gratuitous and unnecessary ways. Um, no uh, Oathsworn figures were damaged during the making of that battle report. Uh, and the long and short of it was that Sir Hartley uh, and his retinue managed to get Joe Stalin and stick him down 
into the catacombs and sneak out of the abbey. At the end of the last battle report, I said that the next battle report would probably be the journey through the catacombs and tunnels underneath the city of London as they try and make their escape. That battle report is definitely going to happen because now that's in a sequence of games that we've planned out. But it's not this battle report. This battle report takes us to the other side of the storyline. Uh, the big baddies of the underworld have decided that it's likely that Sir Hartley's going to try and smuggle Stalin out of London on a boat. So they've dispatched a bunch of scallywag scoundrels and utter scumbag pirates to the uh, marsh town, riverside village of Benfliot, down the river, down the Tamesis, uh, and these pirates have to steal a ship and sail it up the river to intercept the fleeing Sir Hartley and his ward. This scenario, then, uh, is not a scenario from uh, the B&B main book. Neither is it from the Warren Percy Affair, which is Oathsworn's own campaign supplement. Um, this is actually um, a version of a, a Legends of the High Sea scenario called Steal That Ship. Um, I was involved in the, the writing of some of Legends of the High Seas many moons ago. Uh, I did the ship rules. Funnily enough, I'm kind of known for that kind of thing. Um, and this scenario was always good fun to play. The pirates have to make their way across the village of Benfield and steal a ship. Easy. Uh, the good guys are the local Benfield militia who have been raised by the mayor. And uh, they have to prevent the pirates from stealing said pirate ship. All the pirates have to do is get two members of their crew onto the ship to sail it away up the Tamesis to intercept the fleeing Sir Hartley and Joe Starling. Let's take a look and see how it all worked out. Benfliot is a small town in the salt marshes on the north bank of the Tamesis, not far from where it empties into the Great Northern Sea. Its town folk are hardy fish of beasts. It's one of the first places that ships come to when they sail into the Tamesis or one of the last places they will sail past on their way out. The townsfolk of Benfliot are hardened to their life in the marsh and on the river and out at sea. Benfliot attracts all kinds of low-life scum, misfits and those who wish to avoid the spying eyes of the merchants guilds of Linden. One such group is the piratical crew of Checkered Jack. Pancake, you lead. We'll make our way to the Red Barrel. I need to speak to the Baron. Hurry up, you lot. Pirates are a well-established war band led by Checker Jack and Pepper, the sharp-eyed ferret. They're a well-armed and determined bunch of scallywags. Right, Jack, we need you to snatch a ship. Head up river. You will need to intercept those order boys and grab the package. No problem, Baron. No problem at all. Yeah, Captain. Are we going to steal a ship? Commandeer. Commandeer, not that ship. We're going to commandeer that ship. Beasts of Benfield were called to a town meeting. The mayor had disturbing news about potential boat thieves. Unbeknown to the townsfolk, the thieves were already among them. They know we're coming, Captain, but I don't think it'll be a problem. Nah, we'll attack at dawn. 
As the mist rolled in from the Tamesis, Mayor Trelawney spoke to the militia. Take up position, stay alert. Those scallywags could come at any time. The militia on watch on that fateful morning were led by Mayor Trelawney, wearer of the town hat, Smollett, a formidable lumber beaver. The rest were inexperienced but determined to stop their unknown enemy from pillaging their town. The pirates made their assault from the land, emerging from the dawn mist in two groups and headed towards the jetties of Benfliot. The militia suspected that today would be the day and they lay in wait. Nervously sitting behind stacks of crates and barrels hoping that the pirates weren't going to be coming. Long arms caliber signaled the attack to begin. Bullets whizzed around, but the early morning damp air spoiled all the powder in all the guns, and not a single shot was felt. The more traditional weapons, bow and crossbow, carried by the militia beasts, were slightly more effective, but wet strings meant that they only did minimal damage to Bonnie and Ratso as they approached the jetties. Pancake, the weasel, was the fastest of the pirates, but as he hit the jetty, he slipped on wet planking, fell, tripped into the water, and then had to root around in the thick, cloying mud to find his two-handed mace. Bonnie, the otter pirate, made her way down the jetties, heading for a small fishing boat. She got a good clear view of the ship they were heading for. Dived into the water. Long arm covered Bonnie's advance. He drew a bead on the lumber beaver, Smollett. With one accurate shot, he took the militia's biggest threat out of action. The mayor flew from his original position round behind the red barrel in in an attempt to outflank the advancing pirates. Mr. Arrow, the Otter Ranger, shot as quick as he could two arrows at Ratso, the pirate, wounding him and knocking him into the water. Redruth, the Raptor, swooped down from his high up position and attacked Checker Jack. But Jack ignored his wounds, being an enduring sort of fellow and fought back with his sword of smiting, causing grievous wounds to the raptor and fighting him off. Ratso climbed back up onto the jetty and charged into combat with Redruth, as Redruth was distracted by Checkered Jack. Unable to defend himself, the raptor was dispatched. Mayor Trelawney decided to get into the action. He flew over the red barrel, but there was no one for him to fight. He brandished his pistols angrily, but to no avail. Bonnie clambered out of the lagoon, up onto a jetty. Hands had been sat behind the, the stack of crates, waiting for such a thing to happen. Loosed a crossbow bolt directly at the otter. And all that time waiting meant he got cold and his reaction to slow down and his bolt missed. Bonnie carried on her assault, charged straight into Livesey, the Otter Mage. It was a vicious attack and the mage was driven back. She was forced to use her own powers to heal herself. Metrolorni, a proud pistolier, leapt back out of his combat with Ratso, firing both pistols. Fortunately for him, 
One pistol failed completely and the other shot went wildly astray. With Red Ruth dispatched, Checker Jack dived into the water and started to swim for all he was worth around the Red Barrel Inn. Pepper finally got her eye in and with a crack shot wounded Mr Arrow and pushed him away from the crates. Hans, the militia rat, finally got his eye in. With a vicious shot from his crossbow he wounded the pirate quartermaster Pepper who retreated into the marsh. Jack Squawkins had flown across jetties and walkways and from his vantage point he then attacked the floundering pancake. Angered by his favourite pistol breaking, the mare charged back into combat with Ratso and with one swift blow of his sword he dispatched the unfortunate rat. Finally, some good news for the militia. Checker Jack carried on swimming around the outside of the red barrel. He was very close to the ship. Mayor Trelawney flew back over the top of the red, red barrel down onto the jetty to try to prevent the two otter pirates stealing the ship. Exhausted and soaking wet, Checker Jack clambered up onto the jetty. He had two choices, shoot at the mare or steal the ship. He kept to his mission, leapt aboard the ship, cut the painter and he and Bonnie sailed it away. The other pirates grabbed the body of the fallen Ratso and they f fled back into the marsh thinking they would pick up the ship further up the river. The mayor picked himself up off the deck of the jetty and looked around to survey the havoc and wreckage that the pirates had brought with them to the sleepy quiet town of Benfliot on the marsh. Well there you go. That's the end of the second scenario in this campaign. Uh, well, it's not the second scenario, I lie. It's the third scenario, but it's the second battle report. We're going to have to go back and uh, replay the first scenario and film that. And then there are a series of other scenarios yet to come. We've mapped out the idea for each scenario, but what the results are, I have no idea. Um, it's worth pointing out a number of things about that game. First of all, if you hadn't gathered, it was a complete and total victory for the Pirates. They stole the ship, they only lost one of their warband, and they put out of action several of the militiamen. Most crucially, uh, the one-shot kill of the Beaver completely ruined all of my strategic decisions uh, running through the rest of the game. If you hadn't gathered, I was playing the militia uh, and Ted was playing the pirates. Uh, he also won absolutely every single one of the initiative roles. I never got a chance to go first. I never got a chance to gamble on what I was going to do. Um, it's one of the great parts of the game. Uh, the pirates kept the initiative throughout and uh, absolutely overran me. There were various bits of the game that don't feature in the video. It's really difficult to make this kind of battle report because you don't know what to kind of include or leave out. And there are bits that we completely lost, I suppose, in the making of this video. We didn't really get to talk much about the Toad Mage and the Pirates and his casting of creeping things and various other bits and pieces. We didn't get to talk about uh, or make a big deal out of the, the, one of the most amusing aspects, which was the Weasel Pancake f just failing completely uh, to jump anywhere, falling into the water, losing his mace and, and just being mostly a waste of space. So it wasn't all... Um, one-way traffic when it came to the actual fight but nevertheless the pirates have stolen the ship the rest of the crew have melted back into the marshland and they'll pick up the boat a few miles downstream and that boat then will sail up the Tamises, hopefully to intercept the fleeing uh, party of the retinue and joe starling if they make it out from the catacombs underneath the abbey which Almost certainly, maybe, possibly, maybe, possibly, Touchwood will be the next scenario that we play a game in the dark in the tunnels under the city of London. You'll have to keep an eye out 
for that. In fact, if you aren't subscribed to this channel, uh, now would be a really good time to click that subscribe button, then you won't miss the next scenario in our campaign uh, as we go. And it's also worth pointing out, um, just for fun, if you're interested in this kind of thing, if you're a B&B &B player, when we finish this campaign, I think it's six or seven games, I'm going to write them all up as a, a campaign pack, which we'll put on the Facebook group, on the Burrows and Badgers Facebook group. If you're new to Burrows and Badgers, make sure you go and join up on the Facebook page. Um, it is, without a doubt, one of the friendliest places on Facebook and on the internet, which is rare, I think, these days. Um, great, helpful uh, contributors, really helpful members, uh, some amazing um, paint jobs, great articles, uh, and the input from Michael and Joe Lovejoy as well, the designers and makers of the game, which is really, really cool. Um, if you are uh, completely new to Burrows and Badgers, you've, as in you've just found it because of this video, then, hey, it's nearly Christmas, do yourself a favour or prod somebody else to go on the Oswald Miniatures website and uh, order you the rules and get a bunch of the figures. I said it before, but one of the cool things I love about this game is the fact that to get a warband for B&B, &B, you need six or seven figures, tops, and uh, you can buy any of them because all figures will go with all other figures, which is really, really cool. Right, uh, so subscribers are ace. If you want to support this channel further, then please do consider signing up on my Patreon, um, patreon.com slash Magathea Build or Worlds. There it is. Um, we're just about to have our December uh, scenery competition where you can enter the competition and the winner will get a piece of scenery made by me at some point in the new year. Pretty early on in the new year, to be quite honest. Uh, in the meantime, I've got other things to be getting on with. This piece of Necromunda scenery needs finishing. That's going to be the next video out. And then we'll see where we are because it's very nearly Christmas and getting into the holiday season. So, thanks again for watching Magathea Builder Worlds. I'm constantly amazed and amused by uh, your uh, support and especially your comments. Leave them down below. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again here on Magathea, Builder Worlds. Cheers. Now, where'd I put that damn paintbrush? <laughs>